What's up, boys, and welcome to How to Dominate, episode 37. This is the long-awaited Vi video. And to make this video really special, we have brought in Super Metroid, who is one of the best Vi players in the entire world. If you don't know who he is, he is a streamer on Twitch, and he was also the only Vi player that was able to maintain Challenger throughout most of last season. So he's going to show you all the specific tips, tricks, and everything Vi that pretty much no one else can. So I hope you enjoy the video. Yo hey guys, this is Metroid. Um, I'm a challenger of I main. I've been challenger for the last four years or so, if you don't already know me. Uh, I stream on Twitch and I have a YouTube channel as well. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video for Dom's uh, How to Dominate series for Vi. And this is a master challenger kind of game. We're against uh, Tarzan on Elise Jungle running Dark Harvest. Uh, I'm running Phase Rush. Although I think Dark Harvest might be decent too, I've heard some good things about it, even though they've done the hotfix nerf. Preseason has just started about two days ago, so people are still kind of figuring things out right now. Um, I'm starting red buff here. I think for Vi, the most important thing is that with your clear path, you are able to hit level 3. Because Vi's level 3 pressure is very strong, but uh, prior to level 3, like her level 2 is just useless, you're not able to do anything. So what you want to do is just try to hit level 3 as quick as you can and look for opportunities for pressure using that. For runes, I'm running Phase Rush, Nimbus Cloak, Absolute Focus, Water Walking, Triumph, Alacrity, and for the stats I'm taking Adaptive Force, Adaptive Force, and Armor. You could take Madrasis as well instead of the Armor if they're very AP heavy, but I think the Armor is pretty solid even if, even if they're AP heavy just because uh, regardless of what the enemy champions have, there's always going to be towers, minions, and jungle monsters which are dealing physical damage to you primarily. So it looks like uh, Elise has gone for a quick level 2 gank bottom, she's going to hit level 3 on the scuttle because she's done red and golems. So now that I know her clear path, I know what she might be doing uh, from this point on. I'm going to hit level 3 off the scuttle and I can actually look for an early top gank on Scion, he just looks very easy to gank right now. So we'll see what we can do. actually done a really quick reaction with this flash there, but that's still good for us to get a flash like that. First hmm. Alright, it's so our ball in gun first blood. Keep in mind, uh, there's the crazy bounty changes and everything, there's a lot to figure out right now, so... There's the tower plating as well, and there's the dragon timers have changed. Vi is actually a really strong champion to take dragons with. She's got a very easy, very comfortable dragon solo. So dragon's something that I like to play around a lot. But uh, with the change they've done, it spawns at 5 minutes now. It's a bit different. You can easily look for Kel'n Trenmere here, he's gonna have to flash over. Maybe Lissandra and I can look to get the first chunk of this tower plating together. And we won't be able to defend this very easily on its own. Hmm. Not quite able to. It's got a lot of resistances in the early game these days. At least it's most likely taking my bot side jungle right now. So that's why it's important that I also take their top side jungle. While I have the chance. Yeah, no flash on Trinomir. Let's ping that to make sure everyone's aware. I was actually expecting to be able to get this plating easily, but it was taking less damage than I thought it would, and just, you know, people are still kind of figuring out the numbers on the new stuff. I think we can probably get this guy, because he's got no flash now. The only bad thing is I've got no red buff, but yeah, we're still able to get it pretty easily. I used to run Electrocute on Vi, but they hit the numbers on it decently, so it doesn't feel very good anymore. Uh, and Phase Rush is actually surprisingly a pretty good replacement for that because uh, after you hit that Q auto E, kind of like with Xin Zhao, you know, your basic combo with Xin Zhao is like dashing and auto queuing. It's an auto attack reset. With Vi, it's a Q and then auto E. Uh, after that, uh, you kind of want to either run people down or you want to reposition. I don't think it's as crucial as it is with Xin Zhao because with Xin Zhao, you have the issue where. There's this Scuttle spawning topside, but I think there's no chance of me being able to contest that because I think the Elise will probably be there. Elise has done their first back, and Elise is also a very strong duelist as well in the early game. 
keep in mind, at least doesn't have an actual ultimate ability. So their early game is always strong because they have their kit front loaded. Uh, they don't need to hit level 6 power spike or anything like that compared to Vi to have their full kit available to them. She's also taking the Skirmisher Saber, so her dueling is going to be a bit extra strong. She's actually chosen to go for another bot gank to refresh her bot lane, probably because bot lane blew some summoners, so... They're not in the top side river. I'm going to try to rush to bot and see if there's maybe something I can do to help them out. Looks like it was a 1 for 2, which is not too bad for that situation, to be honest. I'm probably going to want to just hold this wave a little bit. We managed to get one of the tower plating sections as a ward here. Yeah, so with Xin Zhao, you really need a phase rush because uh, in order to get the knockoff off to kill people, you kind of need to make sure you stick onto them after the E auto Q. But with Vi, it's not as crucial, but it still works very well because there's a lot of situations where it helps you reposition very well, it helps you run down people really well. I just find it's very versatile and it's very effective if you make good use of the movement speed, if you're good at making use of the mobility especially. The pink here, I'm gonna... I'm gonna take it, which helps me because, you know, it's a golden experience, but another alternative would have been to not show myself on the pink ward, so that the enemy team doesn't know whether or not I'm going on the side of the map. I would be withholding information from them, and I think that's really effective as a jungler. To think about what information you're giving the enemy team when you're doing what you're doing. I am going to go for a red buff steal here. I'm a little bit surprised they're not on it. I was warding it, expecting to see Elise on it, but they're nowhere to be seen. So there they are. Elise is right here. Mm, I kind of want to start this dragon, but Tremere has free reign at mid, and Elise is on that side of the map for sure, this side of the map for sure. So it's not a good idea. Especially because they have a ward right here, which would see me exiting the dragon pit. So by the fact that they didn't see me exiting the dragon pit, they know already that I have to be... This is actually really good for us, I think. Might even be able to get out, potentially. So this dive was actually really horribly executed by the enemy team here. I'm super happy about how that worked out for us. I got a really nice ulti to pick off the Kai'Sa and finish off the Thresh with the Flash onto him right before he can hit me with the Lantern. So this word would have seen me exiting the Dragon Pit, I think, which is why they knew I had to still be in the Dragon Pit, and it's a little probability that I'm like recalling the Dragon Pit, so they were definitely going to check that. I think that was like a overly forced, like poorly executed bot dive from the enemy team, to be honest. So anyways, uh, one big change in the preseason right now is that the first of each dragon, like the first ocean you get, your team gets, or the first mountain your team gets, or the first infernal your team gets, or the first air that your team gets, is actually worth quite a bit more than uh, the second one, and especially the third one. The dragons are kind of front loaded like that, like... At the end, if you've got three dragons, it's the same thing as if you had gone three dragons before. But the first one is worth significantly more, and the second one's worth a bit more, and the third one's worth a bit less uh, than it would have been previously. So that first Ocean Dragon is actually going to give us quite a lot. It's 1.5 times as much as it was previously. And along with that, uh, the dragons actually respawn every 5 minutes instead of every 6 minutes now. I'm going to see if I can help this guy out, but I think it's too late. Yeah, it's just too late. Mm, I don't think I can do anything to this. Uh, I'm a little bit disappointed by that. I think the Lissandro is looking it up, so it's not too bad, but it's not worth it. Mm. I wonder if I should have ulted onto the Trinmere here to mitigate his damage, since Lee's had just gone all of her abilities out regardless. I'm not sure. I think maybe if I QR'd to change those abilities, I would have been able to have a better result there. It's not horrible, it's just not as good as I would have hoped. Oh, if you can live through this, it's actually really good. Okay, it's actually really, really good for us. That situation worked out really well for us. This is super good for Garen. 
If Lissandra was able to get to that a little bit sooner, it would have been fantastic for us. It was a bit awkward instead for me to turn onto them, but it was okay. The only downside really was uh, I think they got a decent shutdown on me. Or they didn't, at, at the very least it's not listed in chat. I saw a kill spree on me, It was on, I saw a bounty on the scoreboard, I think maybe it's bugged there, that I don't see it in chat. In any case, there's Elise. Elise is still quite strong dueling, he's got the Skirmisher Saber and everything still. Oops, it's actually nice to from them. Need to get out of this situation now. Ah, oh, I can't even. I was kind of greedy to look for that anyways, there is the Thresh coming up. I thought I could land. If I didn't have Phase Rush, I wouldn't even have looked for that. But with Phase Rush, you can kind of look for situations sometimes where if I can connect the Q there and auto E onto this, the Elise, I can run away really quickly and have a really good chance of juking out of the stun. Uh, during the duration, the short, even the short duration where she's CC'd. But since she blind juked the Q, uh, it didn't really work out. It was great to look for, anyways. It was just going to have chunked at least a little bit. It's unnecessary. We lost bot tower off of that, kind of. That was definitely a mistake for me. Next dragon is going to be Ocean again. It's a little bit too bad. Uh, like I was saying earlier, Vi is actually a really strong dragon taking champion. So if you can, with the, the changes to the dragons, with how they're more powerful than before and come up more frequently than before, if you're able to control dragons well, like you are with Vi, usually, um, it's actually going to be really strong for your team. But what you actually ideally want is for each dragon to be different. If you can get three different dragons as the first two dragons that spawn, then you can secure all three of those and it's really big for your team. Like first mountain is really good, first infernal really good, first ocean, first air. They're all really powerful. But if you just get like three oceans in a row, you're going to be kind of sad because you're not going to be getting nearly as much mileage out of your dragon control as you would otherwise be getting. I'm going to look for top dive here, top gank at least. I think it's probably one of the better places we can have a chance of getting pressure on the map right now. Dreamer is a bit annoying to pressure because of his ultimate. The only annoying thing here is if Scion uses his ulti, he can probably just get out of this without really too much of an issue, so we'll see what we can do. I think right now he's just ran himself out of mana, so he can't get out anymore. My character actually bugged out there and just got frozen in place because of the E. I don't know what that's about exactly, but survived. I just had to blow my flash. But so now they're rotating to top lane. I'm glad we were able to get that just before they all got here, because we're gonna need to back out now since I'm like zero HP. At the very least, I'm going to need to back out. I am healing up an okay amount off of the ocean dragon, but there's wards all over the place here. I can't do all that much. Turret plating is going to fall soon, which means that we're not going to be able to collect any more gold off of their turret plating. But it also means that the towers on both sides will be able to be sieged very easily. I actually go with Vi, like people, a lot of people think Vi is, you know, meant to be built as a tank or meant to be built as like, you know, mostly tanky. But I actually go for kind of a primarily damage build with Vi. I find it's actually very effective. I think this guy's pretty locked here, but we'll see what he can do. Yeah, so I tried to help them out a little bit, but I wasn't able to do enough to save them, really. <clears throat> that next dragon is up now, but I don't know how much we're going to be able to do with that. Since we don't have less on the map yet, but I don't think they're going for it since they're looking for this greedy blue invade. Okay. That was a unfortunate, but I mean, we got at least Splash. I don't think we were going to be able to get him. I'm honestly surprised they didn't just repel onto the Rift Herald. I don't know if maybe they can't do that, or... That's what I was kind of expecting there. Maybe they didn't have vision. Although I think repel usually gives vision and stuff like that. In any case, that's at least no Flash. I guess I'll be shoving mid here. My first item tends to be Yomu's Ghostblade, and then for boots, I get Swifties a lot of games. Uh, I don't think Swifties are like necessary or you know crazy good or core, like you need to get them or anything like that. 
but uh, they're definitely decent, and I'm very used to having them. One of the things that makes them not too bad on Vi is the fact that the Q's, uh, you know, Vault Breaker Vi's Q solves her as she's holding it down. And you're going to be doing that a lot of the game. And so the Swifties make it so that you're not going to be slowed as much, which actually help a decent amount because move speed differentials in League of Legends are very important. I want to set up vision here. I need to call my team over to do that with me. At least is right here. We want to set up vision before they can, but uh, it might be a little too late. Maybe I'm not sure. Looks like we've got a bit of vision. This has the ulti back up now. Bar is gonna have ulti up in a second. At least has already gone over. I don't know where Scion is. I do know that Garen does have TP, but TP can't be cancelled anymore these days. I'm just a little bit of XP off of level 11, so I'm kind of trying to look for that now. Yeah, so we lost a dragon. We couldn't really do too much about it. They're just a bit ahead at the moment. We couldn't set up division enough, and we didn't know where Scion was. He just showed top immediately after that dragon died, so that's a little bit unfortunate for us. I think we would have felt a bit more confident looking for the vision there if we knew that he was top, but... Yeah. It's okay, I think they've got a bit of a stronger early game with Elise. You can definitely go, like I was talking about the boots, you can definitely go Mercs or Tabby as opposed to Swifties. It's not mandatory to go Swifties at all. I can try to look for this guy, but it's going to be really quite difficult to have any chance of realistically looking for him. Uh, I'm a little bit disappointed by that. I was really expecting that Q on him that I just used to put me in front of him, but not quite. It was worth a shot though, I don't have too much else to do right now. There's a Rift Herald on the map right here, but I don't think it's safe for me to go for it all. I don't know where Elise is at the moment. So Elise is actually bottom, and I don't think I can do anything to help with that, so I'm just going to go for the Rift Herald now. I don't know exactly where Trinmere is, but we'll see. So I don't think they have vision here, yeah, they don't. Trinmere is bottom. He's definitely going to have a decent chance of putting a lot of pressure on that bot tower, but at the very least this Rift Herald will help us. Do some return pressure. Uh, Lissandra's getting herself caught in mid, not being careful. I don't know why Bard is coming to help me either, it's not really necessary at all. But... I mean, that's just what happened, I guess. This Bard LT is not going to do much besides stall this tower kill with flight amounts. Not really that useful for us. Streamer doing some insane chase in the middle of our base at the moment. I don't know what's going with that. I'm gonna get my completed Yomas here. The Reptile Recall. We have no vision on the map at all. I feel like our support's been having a really hard time placing wards. I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure. But, I mean, I think they're gonna pick some wards up at the base now and be able to help us have vision on the map now. Maybe, hopefully. <laughs> we kind of need that to do anything at the moment. Even here, like, at least can literally just be sitting right here and kill me. It's not even... It's not feasible for me to go anywhere without risking dying. It's too easy for them to pick me. I want to go here and place my pink, but... Can't even. It's okay. All in due time. Right, I'm gonna try to... I'll bar it out a little bit here. Scion's bottom. I wonder if he's got any teammates with him or if he's just messing around. It looks like he's just messing around. It looks like maybe. Oh, there's actually Shimmer over here. This actually looks like it could be pretty good for us. I had to release Q there, it was, like, I mean, ideally I'd want to time it to connect it with the guy as he gets out of the Vanya form or whatever, but I can't really in that situation because my Q is about to time out. It's all good though. Scion and Tremir both use Flash. I had to Flash away to not get killed by the Tremir, but I'm really happy with how that situation played out overall. I actually was able to mitigate Scion's ulti completely using my ulti. That was really effective there. If he had held his abilities differently, it might have worked out a lot worse. There's a fight brewing here, I'm gonna use my Yomus to try to speed up to this fight.
kind of just creating, trying to create a situation where Garen can do something, but it didn't really work out at all. I don't know what happened exactly there. I don't know if he can really get this. No, it doesn't seem like it. I'm a bit surprised that that worked out so poorly for us. It's possible I should have just been ignoring the fight completely and just uh, heralding the tower, which was my original plan. Finishing off the tower, heralding the next one or something like that. But it seemed like my team was up here, the enemy people are over here. Like maybe I can cut them off for sandwich them with my team, but I think they had to chase too far up to get the elites or something, so they weren't able to sandwich them in time. So what actually ended up happening was I was just turned on and killed and they were able to get out regardless. Kind of disappointed with that, but I think we can still do a lot. Overall, we're not too bad of a spot. <clears throat> the next dragon's just come up, it's actually a mountain dragon. I'd really like to get that, but the Tristan on our team is to go back, I guess. I don't know. Garen's getting pressured pretty heavily at the moment. I'm gonna shove mid out and use my Rift Herald because it's about to run out. get this, I think it'd be pretty good for us. I'd ideally like to use it closer to the tower, but it's going to be running out really soon. I don't really want to risk uh, running further forward and getting zoned off. We lost to the dragon here, which is unfortunate. That first mount dragon is actually huge for them. It allows them to kill towers and take Baron very easily. We were actually able to get the full tier 2 off of that rift trail, which is actually surprising to me. I was expecting to just chunk it low HP, but definitely good for us to be able to get a full tower off of Drift Trail. I, <clears throat> I could give this blue out, I don't necessarily need it. Uh, well, I used to be like pretty reliant on blue buff and having a lot of mana problems in the early game, but they've actually lowered her ease mana costs by a decent amount. Oh. gonna cause a lot of problems for us. Isa's not here yet, but she does have the ulti to get in. I'm just gonna ulti straight onto the Kaisa here. Hope we can do a lot with that. I don't know where the Elise is. Oh, she's still there in the push. I'm quite low on health at the moment. IQ could have probably connected, but we'll be okay. So at least it's actually rot rotated to mid now. That was a really messy team fight for us, but I'm really happy with how it worked out for us. The Tyrmere was having a hard time getting much there, I suppose. And he just died. We have to be really careful though, like, we're not in a bad spot. The Garen's actually uh, been able to do a lot for us, surprisingly. <laughs> I don't see very much Garen, but this Garen's been doing well. But, uh, oh, I actually want to take that ball wave. Because they have that mountain dragon, they can actually look for a Baron very easily. They at least use flash in that team fight, for sure. They look for a pick on me, but thankfully I'm just durable enough that they're not able to completely pick me right now anymore. I think I actually maybe wanted to just look for this tower immediately after the team fight. And it might have been actually the correct decision, is just to rotate immediately to the bottom. So that's maybe a bit of a misplay for me, but. It's okay. They've actually got no stopwatch now as well. We have to keep in mind that Thresh does have stopwatch though, and this guy also has QSS. So they're both uh, important to keep track of. I think when the team has items like that, GA, stopwatch, Sonya, etc., uh, when they first buy them or when they first appear in the inventories, it's good to let your team know so that everyone's kind of on the same page as to what tools the team has available to them so that your team is able to fight as effectively as possible. I'm gonna try to place a ward here. Kind of important to have a little bit of vision. They've actually nerfed the warring totem a little bit on this preseason patch. I'm just gonna try to focus this guy really hard for us. I think that was actually really good. He's just too out of position to get out of that situation. Uh, what I was actually looking for there was uh, E through enemy team members onto the Thresh to see if I could finish him off just barely, but I wasn't able to find it and I just ended up getting picked off. I should have just backed off completely. This guy's actually got Zonya's complete, it's worth noting. I think he did already use it in that team fight there. 
channel my team know. It's important for this. They know that a guy cannot use Anyas. This is really messy. Oh, it's really bad. Sandra might be able to help clean this one up. Please, no! Oh, what? I could have sworn he used it. Oh, it was the Thresh who used his. That's what happened. It was next to the least. That's actually really, really bad, really unfortunate. The Garen had a huge shutdown there. 1,000 gold went onto that at least, so it's actually really bad for us. Just the the Kai'Sa there, uh, the Garen ulti was left alive with just like 50 HP or whatever. It's super unfortunate. And then I don't know where Lissandra went during that. I think she got confused and went somewhere else to do nothing. <laughs> kind of unfortunate. This is, uh, keep in mind, this is at 4 a.m. and it's my first game of the day. And and it's preseason, it just came out. I'm a little bit, you know, kind of trying to figure things out. I think everyone else here is kind of trying to figure things out. I think, you know, this matchmaking here is a little bit like a little bit of players from all over. The ratings, probably some Diamond players, probably some Challenger players, probably some Master players. But it's all good. We're definitely, uh, we were in a fairly decent spot. We're still not in a bad spot, but that team fight was a little bit of rough at the end there. I definitely didn't need to die. I definitely need, didn't need to end up that bad. There's a mound dragon up, but I don't know what we really want to look for it. I mean, they can do Baron extremely easily with this mound dragon they've got. We really need to not give them any chance of that. That first mound dragon that they have, it just gives them so much damage to uh, epic monsters and towers. It's ridiculous. So I saw someone over at the Baron place a ward, and they've definitely placed some wards around them. Or someone at the dragon, rather, and they definitely play some wars around the Baron. I think Trimir just sold the dragon. Keep in mind, if you've got that one mountain dragon, like, you can take another dragon, you know, of any dragon or whatever, very easily as well. Let's take Baron very easily, so. It kind of feeds off of itself a little bit. This guy's got Mercurial, Mercurial completed now. And now that they got two mountain dragons, it's only going to get worse when it comes to the Baron pressure. So let's see what we can do about it. If we can team fight off of Baron and play team fight well, I think it's really good for us. They're on Baron right now. Holy crap. I live, but not enough health to really do much of anything. Super awkward. It seems like it might end up really good for us, though. Oh. That does suck. Oh. Fuck, that's so unfortunate. I can't believe he actually got me. I think my Umus came back up just at that moment as well. Keep in mind, I've got Nimbus Cloak as well as Phase Rush here, so that movement speed I was able to get, and man, she actually scared away from the Trinmere, which I thought for sure was going to kill me there. It's pretty crazy. Definitely really strong. Man, it's too bad though, I mean, I almost feel like I could have rotated back into that team fight a little bit sooner. I was trying to heal up a little bit with the Ocean Dragon and Red Buff and whatever I had. Before I go back in that team fight, you know, I just got to like 1 HP. But if we were able to get back in there and deal with the sign just a little bit better, it would have actually been really, really big for us. Yeah, they're on it. They're trying to rush it really hard. Like I was saying, you know, that that mountain dragon, the dull mountain dragon, is just so big for them. They can, they can rush it so easily. They just missed Smite. This is actually huge for us. Holy fuck, that's huge for us. That's so big. <laughs> oh my god, that's tragic. They gotta be fucking so torn up over that. That, that just before the Bard ulti landed, just before the Bard ulti landed, the Baron's 1,030 HP or something, and they smite it. All Bard has to do at that point is just time his Q correctly and he can get a free steal. It's so crazy that we were able to get that. I'm so fortunate to have that have happened. I definitely think uh, the Lissandra was a bit out of position to have created that to begin with, but it definitely sucks that I, I wasn't able to live here. I, Honestly, when I was in that situation, I thought to myself, like, oh, this Lissandra might die here. I didn't even think that I could even die from that Scion, but... Yeah, I could have been more careful. I could have used my Smite here on the Scion as we were chasing him down, and it would definitely have made things easier so easier for us to finish him off, but I was trying to see if I could hold a Smite so we'd have a potential for doing Baron. 
or Stealing Baron if that situation happened. But yeah, it didn't play out too well for us. It's okay though, we were able to steal the Baron when they tried to do the Return Baron off of... Um, oops, what is this? Maybe it looked a force here? I guess not. That's okay. If you can Q Scion, because you know he's CC'd, uh, it cancels him out of his Q. So I was trying to see if I could get that there, but he knocked me up before I could get onto him. It's okay though. And I just tried to ulti him because it seemed like he might be too separated from his team to get away. And we have a lot of people behind me that can follow up easily on it, but uh, he just ulted away, so no big deal. I think my Tristana, like, my Tristana can do stuff with red buff, I can do stuff with red buff. Uh, Garen can do stuff with red buff. We're all auto attack reliant champions, so he'll probably want it the most. He's also going to want to get level 16 at some point, I guess. Right now I'm working on Starax. Starax is a nice item because, you know, it gives you still some damage to help you be, you know, remain a threat to the enemy team, but also it gives you some survivability, especially when you're ulting in, it gives you that big shield and the tenacity and stuff. It makes you hard to kind of deal with for the enemy team. We got your near splitting. We're looking like we're having a hard time to actually push down mid or anything like that. I guess I'll go deal Trinmere with Garen. Uh, I think... Okay, thank god. I was like, Sandra might be getting herself killed here, but... Um, it was actually dragging him 10 seconds. Oh, Garen actually, I think... For, or Trinmere actually, I think, forgot to ulti there, maybe? We were able to surprisingly pick off the Elise there. I thought we weren't going to be able to get much. I mean, Lissandra was doing all my things to, you know, encourage us to go into that situation. But the funny thing was that Lissandra was actually all the way over here when she was pinging those, like, not really actually in that situation. So, but it's okay. Hmm. Let's be careful here. I think. Okay. That guy does have Mercurial, so it felt like maybe we'd be better off being careful about it, but it actually worked out brilliantly for us. Okay, so Trimmer just flashed on you. It would be nice to get the LP off on him, but things will probably still work out for us. Alright, they're all dead now. We can actually send the game off of this. <clears throat> I definitely need, did need to die there at the end. I took quite a few more tower shots than I was supposed to. It wouldn't have been a big deal before the preseason changes, but the funny thing is, uh, well, one of the big things about the preseason changes is that they increase the damage of the towers by like a really significant amount, so I took a lot more than I would have expected. Still my bad, but yeah. Anyways, this was a decent game, I think. Not not crazy, but I I, I think I worked well with my team. We were able to get some uh, good team fights, some good team plays. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys were able to learn something from here. Uh, and yeah, if you want to check out my channel, I'm Super Metroid on Twitch, on Twitter, etc. Yeah. Thanks for watching guys.